Hello folks, I'm Sherry Schreiner. I want to do this video on Nibiru a little bit more extensive. And I just put one out talking about red Nibiru turning blue because of the ether orgone saturated air and space because of our orgone war against the aliens. All these meteor showers the last few years they've all been UFOs crashing from our orgone. But what I wanted to talk about is this. Um, I wanted to give you a heads up on a book Emanuel Velikovsky wrote back in the 1950s. And he wrote about the 12 stages of the Planet X Passover in his book called Worlds in Collision. And what he detailed was that he had found doing research that in... 1600 BC, 3600 years ago, there was a planetary, almost mass extinction level event uh, during this time when a huge planet had crossed by. I think some people refer to Zechariah Sitchin's work, but I don't, I don't regard him as anything but a Satanist, so I discredit anything he has to say. Uh, but what Velitsky has to say is interesting. If I say his name right, Velikovsky. And he detailed through his research all of the things that they went, the planet went through at the time at the, the passing of Nibiru 3,600 years ago. And these are the things he mentions. Red dust, gravel hail. He said one of the first visible signs of this encounter was the reddening of the Earth's surface by a fine dust of rusty pigment. In sea and lake and river, this pigment gave a bloody coloring to the water. Our planet entered deeper into the tail of this comet. The dust was the forerunner of the gravel. Of course, we know that Nibiru is not a comet, but it does have a huge red dust tail behind it. Then he talks about a rain of naphtha-type substance, which is crude oil or a flammable liquid, some type of napalm. He said the descent of the sticky fluid, which came earthward and blazed with heavy smoke, is recalled in the oral traditions of the inhabitants of both hemispheres. Uh, he says it may have well floated upon the surface of the seas, soaked the surface of the ground, and caught fire again. Wind and darkness was caused. He said an exceedingly strong wind endured for seven days. All the time the land was shrouded in darkness. He talked about earthquakes. Uh, great earthquakes across the entire globe. Epic winds, disturbed rotation of the earth. Tidal waves. Probably didn't have a word for tsunamis back then. Talks about the tidal waves hitting, electrical discharges. Uh, the night the great earthquake shook the globe was, according to rabbinical literature, as bright as the day of the summer solstice. Debris and meteors. The head of the comet did not crash into Earth, but exchanged major electrical discharges with it. And of course, we know that. The Bible talks about 75-pound hailstones that will be hitting the earth. The rain of meteorites and fire from the sky, the clouds dust of exogenous origin that drifted low, and the displacement of the world's quarters created the impression that the sky had collapsed. He writes this in his book. Extreme temperatures, the interior of the, uh, of the terrestrial globe pushed toward the exterior, the earth disturbed its rotation, Developed heat. The land became hot. Many people describe the melting of the Earth's surface and the boiling of the seas. And this is exactly the same thing we have in the trumpet judgments where we have uh, the fervent heat of the sun. I'm going to get the trumpet judgments here in a few minutes. And he also mentions the roaring noise of trumpets. Earthquakes are often accompanied by a roaring noise that comes from the bowels of the earth. 
The approach of two charged globes toward each other could also produce trumpet-like sounds, varying as the distance between them increased or lessened. A pole shift and magenic reversal. Testimony from all parts of the world at the side, which is now turned toward the evening, once faced the morning. The terrestrial globe is a huge magnet. A short circuit between it and another celestial body could result in the north and south magnetic poles of the Earth exchanging places. And he talks about general eruptions of clouds. Volcanoes, vomit, wa uh, vomit water vapor, as well as cinders. Talks about volcanoes going off. And this certainly sounds like the times we're heading in. The, the Bible talks about heading into the tribulation period. Part of the judgments are the seven trumpet judgments. And the first judgment is hail and fire mingled with blood cast onto the earth. A third of trees and all green grasses burn up. And the term blood, blood can be literal or metaphorical. In a metaphorical sense, it refers to something that resembles blood, such as what causes red tides, a red algae bloom invasion. The second trumpet judgment is a great mountain burning with fire and asteroid crashing into the sea, killing a third of the sea. The sea becomes blood, killing a third of the creatures and a third part of the ships. The third trumpet sounding is a great star falls from heaven as it were a lamp. Comets are another name for, or lamps are another name for comet. And it falls upon a third part of the rivers and the name of the star is called wormwood. And a third part of the waters become wood wormwood, they become bitter. And the fourth judgment to sound is a third part of the sun is smitten. A third part of the moon and a third part of the stars smitten to darkness. And there was no sun for a third part of the day, and no light for the moon for a third part of the night. When you look at the judgments of the Bible during the tribulation period, it talks about earthquakes, fires, 75-pound hailstones hitting the earth. It talks about the water turning to blood. It talks about tsunamis and a fervent heat. And in various places in Isaiah, he talks about the earth rocking to and fro like a drunkard. That pretty much aptly describes a pole shift, folks. And so we have a correlation between Nibiru coming in toward the earth. And, and many of these warnings, these judgments of the, the biblical tribulation period coming to pass as a result. And you read the descriptions of the disasters that hurt the earth, hit the earth 3,600 years ago. It pretty much correlates with everything they're expecting to happen now with Nibiru passing again. And this planet is coming, folks. We've known it as a huge red giant planet. But it started coming in in 2012. It hightailed it back out of our atmosphere. They've been working on putting shields around it. And what I've learned is that when they put these shields around objects, when they come back into our space, our sky, our solar system, it tur our saturated air, orgone saturated air, turns them blue. And so I half expect Nibiru to come back as a huge blue planet, this being the blue Kachina that the Hopis prophesied about and warned about and they said when you see this blue star Kachina it signals the destruction of mankind interesting the trumpet judgments in the book of Revelation and, and it describes how when two charged solar or planets are going to face off and come towards each other you will hear it mimics the sound of large loud trumpets it all correlates, folks. I don't know where people think they're going to be safe. You're not going to be safe anywhere but in the arms of the Father. Satanists think they can run and hide. Guess what the Bible says? Part of the judgments in the Bible is that there's going to be such huge earthquakes that hit this earth. Every island will disappear. And mountains will vanish. 
which literally means the earth will open up and swallow up mountains. Islands will sink. If you're on an island, you might want to consider getting off of it. But you look at the disasters that this tribulation period is going to cause, this, this incoming Nibiru Planet X is going to cause, and tell me with all your planning and all your prepping, you plan to survive this. You're not going to survive it, folks. You just delay the inevitable. An asteroid is going to hit the Earth, I believe, uh, over in uh, the Asian Sea, uh, where Indonesia is. A lamp is going to hit the Earth. I believe that one is going to hit in the Atlantic Ocean. We're going to have 420 days just of pure hell on Earth with demonic alien type being armies unleashed on the earth you have a, a huge what the bible describes as a locust invasion for five months they torment mankind and then for 420 days that's almost two years of judgments this 200 million demonic army that spits fire like dragons goes through the earth to kill mankind. We're heading into some hard times, folks. If you're on the fence, get off of it. The only safe place is to be under the wings of the Almighty God. You can go to SherryShriner.com uh, and you can learn more about Nibiru. I've written many articles. You can also learn how to get right with God if you've never accepted Yeshua as your savior don't put it off folks if you think you can beat the disasters and destructions that are coming to this earth you're a special kind of a different color in the crayon box anyway folks just wanted to give you a heads up till next time everybody God bless don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you